Hello, I'm Yate Wan from University, University of Tokyo. And uh, I'll present the, our work titled Multivariate Encryption Schemes Based on Polynomial Equations or Real Numbers. And this is a work by Takanori Yasuda, me, and Tsuyoshi Takagi. In this talk, I will show a new way to construct multivariate encryption schemes. But before that, I would like to introduce what is multivariate cryptography. Multivariate cryptography uses a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials as its public key. So to break the whole crypto system, we need to solve that polynomial system. And to solve a multivariate quadratic polynomials over a finite field is actually called uh, the MQ problem, which is short for a multivariate quadratic problem. And uh, it is proven to be MP complete. And there is no efficient quantum algorithms proposed yet. Uh, and it serves as a security basis for multivariate crypt crypt cryptography. And the next, I, I will show uh, how to construct multivariate cryptography. So we need uh, a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials over a finite field. So we first define a finite field as f, and the, uh, let n and m to be two positive in integers, and the f of x1 to xn to be the polynomial ring, in x1 to xn over f. And for its private key, we need three different maps. We need an easy to invert quadratic map. We also call it a central map. Uh, we denote it by f. And um, it is um, a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials, but they are very easy to solve. And also, we need two invertible linear maps, s and t. And um, for its public key, we just compute a composition of these three different maps. We obtain the public key P. P is also a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials, but they are very difficult to solve. Um, to perform uh, the encryption on a plain text, we simply just evaluate the, the public key at the plain text, and then we will get the cipher text. To perform the decryption, we need to invert these three different maps one by one. And finally, we'll get the plain text. OK, so in this talk, we, will, we, will need, we need to consider another problem that is called constrained MQ problem. It's very similar to the MQ problem, but uh, its solutions is constrained to uh, a specific set. Um, the set is given by um, all the integers between negative of negative l over two and l over two, and uh, a solution to the constrained MQ problem is also a solution to the MQ problem. And uh, next, I will introduce uh, the method called the PQ ma PQ method for, for constructing multivariate encryption schemes uh, based on the constrained uh, constrained MQ problem. But before that, let's consider how to construct multivariate cryptography using this constrained MQ problem. So the difference of these two different problems is that um, the constrained MQ problem has its solutions constrained to this set. So let's first consider a very simple case based on the constrained MQ problem, which is the case of uh, one polynomial in one variable. And we start with um, a very small prime p, and then uh, a positive integer n. And then we choose um, a polynomial f, which is nonlinear polynomial with integer coefficients. And also f modular p equals to n is very easy to solve. And uh, we choose another polynomial, nonlinear polynomial h, which is uh, also a polynomial with integer coefficients. And then we consider two positive integers, capital M and capital N, such that M is larger than the maximum element in the codomain of F, and N is larger than the maximum value in the codomain of H. And then we consider F plus R times H, with R being a positive integer. And let's draw this, let's draw the value of F plus R times H in a, a number line. And we have these two different cases. So we know the value of h can be 0, 
and negative 1, 1, and negative 2, and 2, etc. So the values of r times h can be the points over here. And then just by adding the value of f, and uh, we can expand the values to, uh, uh, to the right and left point of, those, um, of these points. So depending on the value of this um, codomain of h, codomain of f, we we have uh, three different cases actually. So in here, I just have two different cases. One is uh, the the circles in here they do not intersect, and also another one is the circles they do intersect. So um, the problem here is we want to consider when we know the value of f plus r times h, we want to uniquely determine the value of f and h respectively. So in the case, in the first case, when we uh, find a random points, and we can easily find the value of f and h. But in the second case, when we um, when we have a random value of f plus r times h, sometimes we do we cannot determine uniquely what is f and what is h. So um, the green and red segments in those dotted circles. Um, are um, the possible values of f plus r times h. And the radius of the circles is actually m. m is the, um, the maximum value of um, the maximum value in the codomain of f. Okay, so um, we know that to be able to uniquely determine the value of f and h, which is um, which is the way for us to inverge the f plus r times h, we need those circles to not intersect. And uh, from this condition, we can know uh, how can we choose the value of r. And another value we need to consider is actually um, the codomain of f plus r times h, the range. The range of f plus r times h is uh, between negative q over 2 and q over 2. And we also need to determine the value of q. And q is larger than this value in here because the circles, they do not intersect. And so from these two uh, conditions in here, we'll be able to invert this f plus r times h equals to c. And how do we find the value of x over here? So we just need to find the values in the number line. So we need to find the value in, of c in here. We know that c lies in this circle. It means the value of h is actually negative 1. And we can find the, the value of f very easily just by computing c minus r times h. And also by the assumption f of x modulo p is actually very easy to solve. Therefore, x modulo p can be easily solved. So. Um, this is the case of using one polynomial and one, one variable. How about using multiple polynomials? And that is, uh, and P, that is the PQ method. And the uh, PQ method is proposed in 2018. Uh, let's first start with constructing the central map of this PQ method. Uh, similarly, we'll choose a small int, small odd prime P. Uh, this is the the p in the pq method, and p can be small primes like 3, 5, 7. And n and, n, n and m are two positive integers. We have ip are, uh, is this set, and we have n variables. And also we define a function that is the least absolute remainder of a dividing p. We denote it as lar p of a. And then we will choose a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials with uh, integer coefficients in this IP interval. And also F tilde modulo P being injective and easy to invert. And then we choose a random uh, multivariate quadratic, um, we choose another set of random multivariate quadratic polynomials and we denote by H tilde with integer coefficients. And then we consider the positive integers, uh, capital N and capital M, such that M is larger than the maximum element 
in the codomain of f tilde, and n is larger than the maximum value in the codomain of h tilde. And then we choose values of um, r, just like the the example, just like the the simple case I showed earlier. We choose value of r1 to rn, and also the large prime q. This is q uh, in the pq method, such that this two condition holds. And these two con these two conditions will enable us to um, compute the inverse of this central map. And finally, we compute the central map f to be f tilde plus h r tilde modulo q, with h r tilde being r i times h i. Okay, so how do we invert the central map? To invert the central map, we basically need to solve f of x equals to uh, a given value c. So first we will use the values r's, r1 to rn, to uniquely find the value of f i tilde equals to c i tilde. So by the assumption, we know that f, f tilde modulo p is, um, can, be easily sol can be easily solved. So we can easily solve this um, system modulo p. And then finally, after by using the function least uh, absolutely remainder of um, bi dividing p, and we can know the value of uh, x in here. Okay, and the private key for the PQ method is um, private key r a quadratic map f tilde, and also r1 to rn, and then a permutation s of size n, and a linear transformation t. And the public key is um, given by given by p, being the composition of these three different maps t, f, and s. And t is a linear transformation, s is a permutation, and f is the central map I just introduced. And the next I will um, introduce our construction um, of a new encryption scheme uh, based on using polynomials over real numbers. And the settings is very similar to the PQ method. We first construct the central map. We pick up two odd primes, P and PG, and N and M are two positive integers. We have N variables, and again we use this function, least absolute remainder, of A dividing P. And then we will choose, uh, we will choose a polynomial map which is a, a set of multivariate quadratic polynomials with uh, integer coefficients in this IPJ. And the H tilde is also the same. It's n uh, multivariate quadratic polynomials with coefficients in IPJ. This F tilde and H tilde, they are uh, practically the same, with, just with different name. And then again, we consider the positive integer capital M and the capital N m is larger than the maximum value in the codomain of f tilde, and n is larger than the maximum value in the codomain of h tilde. And then we choose value r1 to rn, and also the large prime q, such that this two condition holds. This will enable us to do the decryption. And then finally, we compute the central map f, being f tilde plus h r tilde modulo q. And uh, h r tilde is just r1 time r i times h i tilde. Okay, to inverse this central map f, we need to solve f of x equals to a given value c. We first will be using r1 to r n to uniquely determine the values of f i tilde and also h i tilde. In here, we we just use value of uh, we just use a i tilde and also b i tilde. And then we will solve the nonlinear equation system with a solution constrained in this i p to the power of n. So we need to solve this system um, in n variables. And I will come back to this later. So just to summary that we have a private key of quadratic maps f tilde and also h tilde. And uh, r1 to rn and a linear transform transformation t. And uh, its public key is the composition of t and f, which is a set of uh, multivariate quadratic polynomials.
Okay, so earlier I showed that we need to solve nonlinear equation system of size 2n in, vari in n variables. So we have this polynomial system and we denote each polynomial with g with g1 to g2n and we need to minimize the value of those g because uh, g1 equals to 0 to g2n equals to 0. So we need to minimize the, the um, to use the optimal, we use the optimi optimization techniques to solve this. So we minimize the, the value of theta being g1 squared, summation of gi squared from 1 to 2n. And uh, we use the method called line search method. So how does this line uh, search method work? So it begins with uh, a fixed uh, initial value x0 and iteratively that we, um, we compute other values that makes the, the value of theta smaller. Eventually we will reach a min minimum value of theta. So in here we just need to choose a direction that makes this, uh, that reduces the value of theta. So uh, we first choose the initial value and then we compute iteratively this, these values in here. We compute xk plus 1 equals to uh, xk plus tk times dk. And tk being the step length and dk is the descent search direction. And there are a lot of different methods for choosing uh, a search direction. Um, there are a lot of different ways. Uh, for example, step is the descent or Newton measured the different ways. Okay, and next uh, I would like to show the, the security of our construction. And uh, intuit the, the most intuitive attack would be just exhaustive search. And uh, that would be exhaustively search all the values in the solution in the plain text space. And the plain text, uh, the size of plain text space is p to the power of n. So the complexity is p to the power of n. But if we use a com quantum computer uh, running Grover's algorithm, then we can reduce this to p to the power of n over 2. And uh, next, uh, which is a more important attack, uh, called a direct attack with hybrid approach, which uh, is basically a combination of exhaustive search with uh, group the basis computing techniques. So we start with the polynomial system that we want to solve. We will fix, specify a certain, val a certain number of variables with some random values, and then the system becomes smaller. And then we'll use Grobner basis techniques like F4 or F5 algorithms to solve this. Um, most of the time, we do not have a correct value. But by repeating this many times, eventually we are bumping to the correct one and we will get the correct value. So the complexity of this attack consists of two parts. In here, we are doing the exhaustive search in here of those certain number of variables. So the complexity is p to the power of k. We're doing k variables. And then we will round Grobner basis. Um, and uh, it has a complexity of this in here. n minus k being the number of variables. d reg um, of p prime is the degree of regularity of on the system pi, a uh, p prime, and to the power of omega. Omega is between two and three, which is the linear algebra constant. So the problem in here is how do we determine uh, degree of degree of regularity of uh, p prime? Um, we first need to consider the constraint on the sol on the solution space. So the solution x i they are all in this set which means these polynomials, they all equal to zero, and then they are hidden informations that we need to add to the polynomials that we're solving. So besides uh, p1 prime to pn prime, we also have polynomials g1 to gn minus k, because we have n minus k variables. So since this p1 prime to pn prime, they are all random. So the degree of regularity it can be estimated by the degree of the first non-positive coefficient of this series. This is actually the Hilbert series. This is actually the Hilbert series of this ideal i in here. Okay, so um, we need to, so um, in here this Hilbert series, the um, denominators in here indicates we have n minus k 
we have n minus k variables. And um, uh, in the numerate part that we have n minus k degree p polynomials and we have um, n quadratic polynomials. So by using this series, we will be able to determine the degree of regularity and force to determine the secure parameters. And um, finally, I will show the parameters and uh, implementation. So uh, we give three different sets of parameters associated to different security levels, and we computed the size of um, public key and private keys, and also the average timings for key generation, encryption, and decryption. So encryption and decryption are all pretty fast for any parameter. But the problem here is the public key size, which is pretty large. But then for um, multivariate, multivariate crypto systems, the public key size is always a little bit large compared to, let's say, lattice-based. So the public key size in here compared to rainbow is actually two to three times more uh, compared to the public key size of rainbow. And uh, other values are look pretty fine. And uh, that is all. Thank you very much.